Hey Bernie, Tim Handron, your mayor here. Uh, today is April 14th. Just wanted to give you a quick update about our city council meeting that we had yesterday. Uh, it was a three and a half hour meeting, so I'm gonna condense this down to uh, just a few minutes for you, I hope. Um, one of the important things that we did last night that I wanna share with you is city council passed a resolution of support for a bill that's presently in committee at the uh, Texas legislature, and that's House Bill 3883 and House Bill 3884. Those are bills that are trying to give the county commissioners in the Hill Country a little bit more authority over density and some of the other development that goes on in the county that they don't have today. Um, we expressed through this resolution of support, really just support for our county commissioner's court. Um, that bill has nothing to do with what goes on in the city, but we felt strongly about that and we just wanted to extend our support to the county commissioners because it's all about our entire community, not just one governmental body or the other. Um, moving on, we had a briefing last night from Chief Kohler, our Chief of Police in Bernie. Uh, he went through kind of the results of the last year's data. This is something he does every single year. And what I would tell you is the, the crime rate in Bernie has gone down for two consecutive years in a row. Um, there's a couple of crime types that are um, higher than last year, but in general, I, I, when we got this report last night, I would just tell you it's an amazing report to see what kind of a community we live in. Um, it's a caring community with very, very low crime rate, and we have an incredible police force. Um, uh, I would encourage you to, if you get a chance, watch the full video because the things he shared with us last night about our, our community and our police force are um, something to be proud of for our entire community. So my, my deep appreciation to our police force for all that they do for our community. We did a quick reminder of what's going on with the Unified Development Code. We've been talking about this Unified Development Code for a couple of years now. What's important about the UDC right now is we have revised all the development codes going forward and we're going through a process of uh, putting properties in their proper new zoning categories. We are defining a few different zoning categories. Uh, this has been going on for probably the last three months, four months. And we're making sure everybody understands exactly what's happening, what's changed from the old environment and what's gonna be new in the new environment. I would encourage you to pay attention to these dates, look at the information about the UDC uh, that's available on the city website. In about three months, this is when this is gonna be adopted and we wanna make sure that everybody is fully aware and fully apprised of what's coming with that. Let's talk about COVID-19 vaccines. You know, the city um, applied to become a, a vaccinator all the way back in January, as early as we could. Uh, we've delivered thousands of vaccines with our vaccine clinics. Um, and thank you again to St. Peter's Church for allowing us to use the Canna Ballroom. There's another one going on this Friday, but here's where we are. Um, we, we actually have more vaccine than people have signed up for. Um, we're, we're trying to get it distributed. Uh, we're notifying everyone that's on our wait list that it's available. And, and frankly, we're just not getting much response. So this Friday, we're doing another uh, mass vaccination, uh, both second doses and first doses of the Moderna vaccine. Uh, if you're interested in getting it, I would encourage you to sign up on our list and you'll get notified very quickly. We are really strongly considering backing off getting any more vaccines at the moment. There's plenty coming into the area, uh, Walmarts, Walgreens, My Urgent Care Clinic and other places. Folks have found a way to go to San Antonio and others. So again, I would encourage you to sign up if you want to get it. There's plenty available. Last, we got a big update on all the things going on on I-10 from our city engineer, Jeff Carroll. Listen, I'm not excited about what's going on on I-10. Uh, I have to cross the, the, the bridge on 46 uh, many times a day, sometimes six times a day, and I'm, I'm very familiar with how, how much this is a disruption in our lives. But what I can tell you is what TxDOT's doing uh, is improving some things that have needed to be improved for a long time. Um, I wanna share with you some of the updates that we got last night, and we're gonna to try to keep this information current on our website, but according to TxDOT and their project management team, the bridge on Highway 87, which is Main Street coming out on the way to San Antonio, that bridge is gonna be a mess at the end of this month because they're gonna tear down the last old part of that bridge. That's scheduled for April 30th through that weekend. You're gonna to wanna to avoid that intersection at the end of this month. Pay attention to our city's website. We'll keep you posted if that's gonna happen, absolutely but that's going to cause a lot of problems on that weekend coming along into summer um, there's going to be a lot of work done around there around scenic loop these projects are going to take quite a bit more time uh, we're getting uh, project updates in terms of spring summer 
um, and fall. Uh, let's talk about Highway 46. That, that bridge is going to be a mess for a long time. Hopefully by the end of the spring, worst case by the beginning of summer, the turnaround at 46. So if you're coming from San Antonio and you come to 46, you'll be able to take the turnaround and then uh, for those that live in Mangrove Springs or that are just trying to go back into San Antonio, that's going to be available. I know that that light right there at 46 from the access road is backed up all the time. I experience it almost every day. Um, but when that turnaround opens, hopefully in a couple months, that will alleviate some of the traffic. But guess what? It's just going to get worse. Um, there's, no, there's no way to sugarcoat this. We're going to start raising the road from Home Depot that comes into the bridge. So if you're coming from Bandera down 46, they're going to lift that whole road up. The problem is we're trying to fix traffic woes from the past 20 years, and it's never easy to fix these. By the time we get into the summer, late summer, that's when they're going to finally tear down the oldest part of that bridge at 46. That's going to be late summer, early fall. Between now and then, listen, uh, there's nothing that we can do about it. It's, it's a hard construction project. TxDOT's spending hundreds of million dollar, of dollars on not only these bridges and the roads there, they're spending a ton of money uh, to create capacity for a, a very congested environment. This is why our transportation planning committee is so important, is we have to get in front of these kinds of projects so that we don't have the kinds of pain that we do with late projects. The good news is our uh, uh, transportation planning committee is starting to meet again this month, and I look forward to them bringing a slew of projects to try and prevent this kind of uh, mayhem that we've had in our lives. Again, pay attention to the city's website. We'll keep posted out there what we know about the projects on I-10. Um, I know a lot of you want to call and complain to somebody. I don't know what you can do to make things go faster. Uh, the fact of the matter is TxDOT is spending money. Uh, they've got this outsourced to three different project uh, crews and they're going as fast as they can go. TxDOT's putting pressure on them. We put pressure on TxDOT. Look, when it's all done, it's going to be great. We just have to endure uh, getting through this painful times. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll keep you uh, uh, posted on future updates. Thanks.